Chicago is a city that has remained an important transportation hub throughout its entire history. In its early days, it was a vital link between the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River watershed. When trains became vastly important in the late 19th century, Chicago was the top hub for the nation. And as airplanes became increasingly widespread, Chicago was quick to establish itself as the leading city for commercial air service. O'Hare International and Midway International airports are, to this day, two of the nation's busiest airports and largest hubs for the largest airlines. Today, we will be comparing these two airports and all that they have to offer. As a native Chicagoan, I've flown out of both airports many times and have always wanted to take the time to compare the two side by side. So, let's begin. Here's some really brief history and context about each airport to get us started. Both O'Hare and Midway are located within the city limits of Chicago. O'Hare is located on the far northwest side and is connected to the rest of the city with a tiny strip of land. It's a little Chicago island in the northwest suburbs. Well, not so little, the place is huge. Midway, on the other hand, is well within the city limits and is entirely surrounded by tightly packed Chicago neighborhoods. It was first opened in 1923 with one runway and was mainly used for airmail. By 1926, it began offering commercial flights and it grew to have four runways by 1928. From the years 1948 to 1960, Midway was the busiest airport in the world. It was named Midway in 1949 to honor the Battle of Midway. O'Hare Airport was the first major airport designed in a post-World War II America. During the war, it was used as a manufacturing facility for Douglas C-54s. After the war, Chicago chose the site for a brand new airport that would help with the rising demand for air travel. They named the airport O'Hare after Edward O'Hare, a World War II flying ace and Medal of Honor recipient. Passenger service at O'Hare began in 1955, and by 1963, it took the title of the busiest airport in the world, which it would hold until 1998. Now for some basic facts. O'Hare saw 83,245,472 passengers pass through in 2018, which makes it the 6th busiest airport in the world and 3rd busiest in the USA. Atlanta, Hartsfield, Jackson, and LAX are 1st and 2nd respectively. O'Hare has flights with 47 different passenger airlines from around the world. Over at Midway, they handled a somewhat more modest 22,027,737 passengers in 2018 and just five different airlines, but that still puts it at number 27 in the country and number 77 worldwide for passenger volume. O'Hare's top domestic destination is LaGuardia in New York City, and its top international destination is London Heathrow. Midway's top domestic destination is Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson, and internationally, it's Cancun, Mexico. O'Hare has seven runways, Midway has just five. O'Hare serves as United Airlines' largest hub, and United's headquarters are, in fact, in the Sears Tower in downtown Chicago. American Airlines also has a large hub at O'Hare, as do Frontier and Spirit. O'Hare has four different terminals, one, two, three, and five. Yes, you heard me right, there is no Terminal 4 at O'Hare. Each terminal at O'Hare acts as the main center of action for different purposes. Terminal 1 is mainly used for United, 2 is for Delta and some Canadian flights, 3 is mainly American, and then 5 is mostly for international airlines. Over at Midway, Southwest Airlines has come to completely dominate commercial activity. Midway is Southwest's largest focused city. There's just one terminal with 43 gates, 34 of which are exclusively used by Southwest. How about getting to the airport? That seems important. Since both airports are actually located in the city of Chicago, public transportation to both airports is extremely easy. The CTA, or Chicago Transit Authority, Blue Line has its northern terminal at O'Hare, and the Blue Line runs across the north side of the city, through the loop, and then out through the west side of Chicago, Oak Park, and Forest Park. Commuters out in the suburbs can take the Metra, which is Chicagoland's commuter rail service, to O'Hare. The North Central Service Line makes several stops just east of O'Hare. Getting to O'Hare via the expressway is extremely easy as well. Interstate 90 runs north of O'Hare, I-294 runs to its east, and I-190 is an auxiliary road from I-90 that goes directly to the main terminal complex. Midway is quite easily accessible as well. 
The CTA Orange Line has its terminal at Midway, and the Orange Line runs through the southwest side of the city and loops around the, well, loop. I-55 runs about a mile and a half north of the airport as well. Multiple CTA buses run directly to Midway also. Once you're at either O'Hare or Midway, what is there to do while waiting for a flight? At Midway, there are over 30 different places to get food and drinks, and nearly 30 stores. There's also a chapel and a yoga room. Midway is also undergoing some renovations, which will streamline its security checkpoints, overall efficiency, and add 1,500 parking spaces to its garage. At O'Hare, there's a lot more to choose from and a lot more going on. In addition to a chapel and yoga room, O'Hare also offers an aeroponic garden, over 130 food and drink establishments, and over 80 stores. O'Hare is also going under a much larger construction project, dubbed O'Hare 21. It's adding a brand new global terminal, two additional satellite terminals, and a revamping of its people mover, which acts as a mini subway line for the airport. Shifting gears just a bit here, O'Hare and Midway have both seen their fair share of accidents and incidents in aviation over the years. The worst accident to take place at O'Hare was American Airlines Flight 191. On May 25, 1979, a DC-10's left engine detached just after takeoff and the plane crashed into a field on Tui Avenue, which is just north of the airport. 273 people lost their lives, and it was the worst U.S. aviation disaster prior to the 9-11 attacks. At Midway, the worst accident happened just seven years earlier in 1972, when United Airlines Flight 553 crashed into the West Lawn neighborhood of Chicago during a second attempt approach to the airport. The crash killed 40 of the 55 passengers, all three crew members, and two people on the ground. It also destroyed five houses. Shifting gears a bit here again, in terms of passenger satisfaction, O'Hare is notorious for being a rather disliked airport. Among the nation's 19 busiest airports, O'Hare ranked 17th for customer satisfaction in a survey by JB Power. That's not very good. I will say personally that O'Hare is definitely not the most well-organized airport out there. In the same study, Midway fared a little bit better. It ranked at number 12 for customer satisfaction out of the 24 next busiest airports under the top 19. Both airports are making efforts in sustainability and energy conservation. O'Hare currently has six LEED certified buildings, or buildings that show leadership in energy and environmental design. It also has an on-site apiary which hosts one million bees every summer. Over at Midway, there's just one LEED certified building, but they also have installed 24 wind turbines on top of their economy parking garage. Although both airports have their differences, they are both extremely vital to the Chicagoland area and contribute billions of dollars to the local economy. Overall, O'Hare is the much busier airport that is well serviced for international travelers and flyers commuting to the airport. Midway is an airport that has been well designed for domestic flying and those operating on a budget. Hopefully this video helped you learn more about the two major Chicago airports. Whether you're planning your next vacation or just a curious viewer, thank you for watching all the way through. If you want to subscribe and stick around for my next video, that would be awesome. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyway. I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you have a good one.